Good morning, everybody. Dennis Engelbrecht, Digging Deeper. You know, thinking back to the early days of this uh, vlog series, um, we talked a lot about, you know, what it takes to be a good project manager, what it takes to be a good superintendent. And I know I've told some stories of some of these great superintendents and their sayings and all of that. But I wanted to come back and uh, focus in on what are the top habits, you know, that we've seen in these superintendents over the years, these great superintendents uh, that always seem to get the job done, come out of there with a great relationship with the, with the team, with the owner, uh, the customer, all of those things. Well, let's, let's try to look at them. So I tried to get down to five top habits. The first one that I've always noticed is a high level of care. What do I mean about that? They care. They care about quality. They care about schedule, safety. They care about the success of the team. They care about the job. Uh, you know, there's caring and just going through the motions. And really, the top superintendents care. Uh, and that's as simple. If, if you don't know what caring is, I'm not sure I can help you. But the top superintendents care. The second thing I've noticed about top superintendents is they're driven by pride, all right? They don't need anything external to, you know, keep them on task, to get the job done on time. It's all internal motivation. They are driven by pride. When they leave that job site, they want to know they've done their best. They want to know they've got the thing on, you know, going in the right direction, that they've done a good job. And that's really what matters to them. It's it's how they feel. You know, when, when the job's done, they love going around the community, perhaps with their children or their spouse and saying, look what I've done, look what I work on. And, and you know, the great superintendents, that, that pride that keeps them in this business and so often keeps them in this position for a lifetime, it, it really is about the pride of the work they're doing every day and the pride of what they're accomplishing in terms of those you know, structures and, and construction accomplishments that they've had in their career. The third habit for the top superintendents that I've noticed is they're all good planners. Now, having said they're good planners, this planning comes out in a lot of different ways. I've seen great superintendents that do most of it in their head. And I've seen the ones that can paper the walls and you know, they've got everybody in there working on, you know, their, you know, what's on the walls and who's next and, and all of this and everybody understands it well. And some of those other guys work it out in their head and they have individual contract uh, conversations with each of the folks, you know, on their team to make sure that everything's in line, everything's going to be there at the right time and that everybody's motivated to get the job done. So there are different ways of doing this. But the ability to actually see out into the future, to be able to have a planning horizon, is really the skill that they possess. And they have the habit, of course, of always using that skill to, to make sure that, you know, there aren't going to be any surprises eight weeks from now, 12 weeks from now. It's all going to be planful and it's all going to happen in an organized manner going forward. The fourth habit of great superintendents is they communicate effectively. I just have never seen a good superintendent who can't communicate. So, uh, you know, some of you, you know, are more introverted and some of you are more extroverted. It isn't really about that. It's the effectiveness of your communication. And again, you know, you may communicate in writing, you may communicate in email, text, verbally, during meetings, individually outside of meetings. It isn't so much how you communicate, it's making sure that there's true communication going on. And by the way, communication is two ways. There's listening and there's speaking, right? So, uh, you know, the good superintendents do listen, but, but they're good at letting folks know what needs to be done, when it needs to be done, how it needs to be done, and even being encouraging and, and helping folks, you know, to get it done. So the fifth and final uh, habits of great superintendents is they perform. All right, what do I mean by that? 
they hold people to high standards. And that comes through in their other habits I've mentioned. But you can't hold folks to high standards if you don't live to those standards yourself. So when I say the great superintendents perform, they show up on time, right? You don't have to guess when your great superintendent's going to arrive at the job site. He's there before you, right? They, they're on time, number one. Number two, they get their stuff done, all right? They get their stuff done, and they get it done regularly. Uh, they don't expect of others what they wouldn't expect of themselves. Uh, they also, kind of going back to their planning a little bit, they finish every day complete. You don't see a great superintendent who hasn't done his paperwork, you know, let's just say his safety report on the day it's supposed to be done or his daily job uh, report. They get those done. They get them done timely. They get them done every day. They don't build up for three or four days. They perform. They get their stuff done. And then they also get their plan done for the next day. You know, they're prepared when they come to the job site so that other people can be effective. So just, you know, quick recap. Top five habits of the great superintendents. They care. High level of care. Two, they're driven by pride. Uh, the pride in the work that they've done and the work that they've completed. Three, they're good planners. They have a good horizon for planning. They may plan in different methodologies, but they're all good planners. Number four, they communicate effectively. Just like they're planning, they may do it in a different style, different method, but it's effective. People understand what they want and they listen so they understand what other people want. And then finally, they perform. All right, they're disciplined enough that their execution allows them to set high standards for others and ultimately achieve great job success. So there you have it, Dennis Engelbrecht, Digging Deeper.